Uh, welcome to our teaching segment today. I'm going to talk about where the safest place in a knife fight is to be. Yeah, if you, the safest place to be in a knife fight is like three blocks away, safely locked inside your house with a shotgun in your lap. Okay, that's the safest place. But if you can't do that, the safest place in a knife fight to end up of is behind your opponent. When Ron's on guard with two knives, huh, here's his center line right here. He's got a knife here and a knife here. His flanks are guarded. But if I can move behind him, back here just holds still Ron, he's got nothing here. This is where I want to be. He's got his kidneys here. He's got his base of his cerebellum here. Here's his neck. Uh, right here is his heart, you know, right in this region. I've got his spine right here. I've got his lungs on either side. It's easy to stab through these shoulder blades. It's easy to impact that spine. It's easy to take his kidneys, okay? Um, lots of good targets, or I can easily break him down from here. So what I want to do in a knife fight, if I possibly can, is I want to turn his flank and get behind him. One of the best ways to turn somebody's flank is humbuck pawiwas. Did I say it right? Humbuck pawiwas. What you want to do is when he cuts, you want to step here to his flank and then push again and take and get all the way behind him. Okay? Get past that knife. Here, one, two. You're probably not going to make it at this range unless you just run behind him. Here, but when I run behind him, you have to turn back to catch him. Okay? That's too long. You're going to have to probably do it in steps. One of the best ways is to pick something up and move behind him. Okay? If I can do it in one, two steps, it'd be here. One, push, two. Now, he may, come over here, camera, he may swing this arm. I can catch that. He, if he swings this arm, it's pretty easy to catch that, too. You can catch it easily with two knives, too. When he swings, one, two. When he swings the other way, one, two. Okay? It's pretty easy. You know what he can do. He can't see you very well. He can't feel you. What? I get to hear. He can't feel me. Once I get to here, he can turn his head, maybe. But he can't see where my blades are going. Because as soon as I get to his flank, I'm going. Okay? I'm going to stab him as soon as I can. So as soon as I turn the corner, one, two, I've taken him. Okay? I'm not waiting for him to do anything else. I'm going to stick him. So anyway, I can turn this, cut on this, like a one, Two. I'll probably stick them on that far kidney. On this side here. One. Now here, I'll drive in and stab him. Way before he can do anything else. Now Ron obviously knows what's going on. But if he's cutting at me on this side here, and I go like this, he didn't see any of that. Did you? Nope. Yeah, if I can pass here and I stick it, he's already been stabbed. You feel that your, right. on your kidney side? Yeah. So this is why I talk about passing all the time. I've talked to you more about passing. Here's why. I want to pass to get to here, okay? If I can pass on this side, here, I've almost got his back here. As I drive through, I'll take that kidney, okay? Now remember, here's something to remember. When you pass with your strong side forward, if I'm standing like this, when I pass here, I get to this first one, I take my next step, and I shoot, okay? When I pass on this side, though, here, look where my knife is. It's not in a good spot. This, this one here is. So with two knives, you got more of an advantage. Because here, I just take a little step and I stick it. With one knife, with one knife, it's not so bad here. See that? If I come on this side, though, and I pass, my knife maybe could take his ribs here. Because I haven't fully go to his back yet. But if I push through on this side, no good. I'm so close, I'm jammed up. So when I pass here, one, I've got to push again. Two pushes, okay? You've got to play with this. This isn't um, something that will come natural. It's one, two. I want to get to him behind him. Just think, this will help you say, move behind him and not so quick that you're reckless. I went here, hit one, and I kept pushing again. Lots of times you have to push on the foot that's forward when you move. On this side, I push, I push. I step here, one, or I can step here. This is a little easier. I step here. Now, my knife can stab him in the rib cage here or under the armpit, but he's still, I'm still a little bit vulnerable to this. So I push a little bit further through, and now I can take his kidney and I can take the back of his head. It's that two steps that you want to work on. Now, with double knife, it becomes a little easier. 
because it doesn't matter any side, which side you go on, uh, your lead hand can get around there and stab them very easily. Here on this, let's try that again. On this side, one, two. Okay? On this side, it's the same thing. One, two. And I stab them again. You need to play with this a lot. And you gotta be careful because he isn't wearing any padding back there. You may want to put on a, um, a boxing uh, uh, bodyguard, you know, or spin, uh, this. or spin this around so he has some padding back there over his back and kidneys because they're going to take a pound. You're not going to get people that want you to stick them in the spine or the kidney very many times without some padding there. So you need to get used to this. Stepping around. Now, don't lose back or track, but when you move, one, two, he may go. Okay? Keep one knife up. Be ready. No matter what, I get here, I'm still ready for him to do something. Let's try again. On this side, square. Yeah. One, two. Now, he may go, even as I pass him here. One. I'm still going to keep moving behind him, even if I pick that up. And if I can, I like to hold, control his elbow here and keep him pushed this way as I move behind him and take that. It's all about controlling his his knife motion, where his knife is, to get at an angle that you can stick him at. And still be aware that he may come. Because when you pick, when you pass him, you may not cut him. This may only pass him out of the way, no damage. So I stepped here, I'm going for position now. But that knife now can come, because I haven't run out. I talked about this just a little bit earlier. I go to position, and I'm running out, I'm moving out, not standing. Getting out of there as fast as I possibly can. Once I make contact and I get out, okay, don't want to stay there. If I see this hand come, I'm going to step here. Now look at my step. I don't just step this way. I want to step and swing this leg around, okay? I'm about five watts. I want to get here. As close to his flank as I can get it. Because from here, I do have an advantage. I just passed that and I can take his ribs if I have to. If I feel like he's going to go, and I don't have any more time, I still got targets, and I zone clear away from his other knife. Raise your knife up to the two of it. Okay, there's his other knife. I zone clear away from that. He can't do anything with that knife very easily from there. Maybe he could try to pass over his back or spin or whatever, but he's really compromised. Now, if I pass this good, and I'm controlling here, I take one more step, and now I can really tap to him well. I've got all kinds of step over to me. Now, that backside comes, and I pass here, okay, again, I've got his flank with the first step, okay, I've got his side of his head, but if I can push a little bit further, I've got all kinds of good targets in his back. It's easier to go to the side that you have forward. If this side's forward, it's much easier to pass here and to come around and take his back this way. It's slower and more difficult to pick up the other side where this leg that's back has to step, okay? It's harder for me, it takes more time for me to get over here and spin around, okay, than it does the other way. Because this step, this foot has to go further. It goes a long ways here, deep step and spin. See how I end up now? I still got some good advantages going, but it takes another step for me to get behind me. So, you need to prep yourself to take two steps. Two good steps. One, two, and you're behind me. On this side, tell yourself it's got to be two steps. One, two, and you're behind it. Count. When I'm shooting, I'm hunting, I'm using a handgun, I'm talking to myself all the time about what I'm supposed to do to make that shot. All the basics. One, two. Okay? If you just run behind him as fast as you can, you'll run away from him. You'll run past him. You won't be able to make the turn. It's got to be two push steps. It's got to be two push steps to get behind him. You run, and you try to speed it up, pass footwork, try to run on him, you do like that. And yeah, you'll get behind him fast, but you won't be in balance to deliver any blows. Okay? It's great for making an escape. It's not great for taking him out. That's how you get behind somebody and win a knife fight with a minimal chance of getting injured yourself. Get behind him and live.